Witnesses of aid convoy violence describe shooting, panic, and desperation. I saw people falling to the ground after being shot, said one witness, and others simply took the food items that were with them and continued running for their lives. They went out by the thousands, camping overnight along a coastal road in the cold Gaza night, huddled together by small fires, waiting for supplies to come so they could feed their families. What they encountered was death and injury by the hundreds, according to witnesses and a doctor who treated the wounded, as Israeli forces opened fire toward desperate Palestinians who surged forward when aid trucks finally arrived before dawn on Thursday. I saw things I never, ever thought I would see, said Mohammed al Sholi, who had camped out overnight for a chance to get food for his family. I saw people falling to the ground after being shot, and others simply took the food items that were with them and continued running for their lives. Amid the chaos and bloodshed, some people were run over by the aid trucks, he said. On Friday, President Biden said the United States would begin airdropping aid to Gaza to help relieve the suffering there, as European leaders condemned Israel for the deaths of scores of hungry Palestinians who were killed as they surrounded the aid convoy. The Gazan health authorities have said that Israeli troops killed more than 100 people and wounded 700 others in a massacre as the convoy rolled along a dark road, a version of events that Israel disputed. An Israeli military spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, said on Thursday that Israeli soldiers had been trying to secure the convoy and fired when the mob moved in a manner that endangered them. But he said the soldiers had not fired on people seeking aid. The military has said that most of the people died in a stampede and that some were run over by the trucks in Gaza City. Around 150 wounded people and 12 of those killed were taken to Kamal Adwan Hospital in northern Gaza, said Dr. Eid Sabah, the head of nursing there. He said that about 95% of the injuries were from gunshots to the chest and abdomen. The deaths touched off global outrage and intensified pressure on Israel to agree to a ceasefire with Hamas that would allow more aid into Gaza. France's foreign minister, Stéphane Sojourn, called for an independent investigation and said the violence around the convoy was the result of a humanitarian catastrophe that had left people fighting for food. What is happening is indefensible and unjustifiable, Mr. Sojourn told France Inter Radio on Friday. Israel must be able to hear it, and it must stop. Annalena Baerbach, Germany's foreign minister, called on the Israeli military to fully explain the killings and joined calls for a ceasefire. People in Gaza are closer to death than to life, Ms. Baerbach said in a statement. More humanitarian aid must come in. Immediately. Mr. Biden said that the United States would work with Jordan to airdrop aid into Gaza in the coming days. Innocent people got caught in a terrible war, unable to feed their families, and you saw the response when they tried to get aid, Mr. Biden said at the White House, before meeting with Prime Minister Georgia Maloney of Italy. But we need to do more, and the United States will do more. Samantha Power, the administrator of the U.S. Agency for International Development, said that regardless of how people near the convoy died, it was clear that they were trying to get food. That cannot happen, she said. Desperate civilians trying to feed their starving families should not be shot at. The British Foreign Secretary, David Cameron, said that Israel has an obligation to ensure that significantly more humanitarian aid reaches civilians in Gaza. A sustained pause in the fighting is the only way to get life-saving aid in at the scale needed and free the hostages cruelly held by Hamas, he said in a statement. Palestinians, particularly in the north, have been fighting starvation and are regularly converging on the relatively few aid trucks that have entered the territory. Aid groups and the United Nations have accused Israel of blocking aid to North Gaza, which Israel has denied. Aid groups have also reported rampant looting of aid trucks in the area. A small number of police officers from the Hamas-run security forces have shown up to work in Gaza City in recent weeks, but they have largely failed to restore basic security, residents said. Last week, the World Food Program, a United Nations agency, joined UNRWA, the UN agency that serves Palestinians in Gaza, in stopping aid shipments to the north, citing lawlessness in the area.